Hey guys, welcome to another EDH Deck Tech episode brought to you by the Command Valley. I'm your host Landon, and today I'll be guiding you through my Tiny Bones Trinket Thief Deck Tech. Before we get into today's episode, I'd like to give a huge shout out to this show's sponsor, Game Grid Lehigh. If you're in the Utah County area, you need to check out their store. They have an amazing staff, huge selection of card sleeves, deck boxes, and a massive card archive, so they're always going to have the card that you need. They also carry a huge selection of board games, as well as everything you need for D&D and Warhammer. Also, if you're new here, we'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. It's a free and easy way to support our channel, and you'll stay up to date on all of our content. We post new deck tech videos every Monday, we do set reviews, and we're also releasing gameplay videos every month. With that out of the way, let's dive into the discarding folly that is Tiny Bones. Tiny Bones is a brand new legendary creature being printed in the new Jumpstart set that's coming out later this summer, hopefully. As soon as I saw this card, I was super stoked and started brewing, and I've been waiting a long time for a Discard Matters Commander, and Tiny Bones has it all, card draw and discard payoff stapled right onto it. So let's let's read Tiny Bones just to see what he does. So he is a legendary creature skeleton rogue, he costs one and a black, and he says at the beginning of each end step, if an opponent discarded a card this turn, you draw a card and you lose one life. He then has an activated ability that costs four black black, and says each opponent with no cards in hand loses 10 life. He's also a 1-2. So what's the strategy with, with Tiny Bones? How are we going to win? How are we going to stay alive? What's, what's the game plan? I've loaded this deck with tons of spells that make our opponents discard cards, and we've got lots of other ways of draining our opponent's life whenever they discard cards, because I wanted some extra redundancy because we don't want to just rely on Tiny Bones to finish our opponents. But we're trying to get our opponent's hands emptied as quickly as possible and then activate Tiny Bones a bunch of times to drain everybody out. It's super key that he says each opponent with no cards in hand loses 10 life. That way we don't have to activate his ability a bunch of times having to target one person. He can hit all of them as long as their hands are empty. It's a super efficient way of taking everybody out and since our opponents aren't going to have very many cards in their hands, it's likely that they're not going to have a whole lot of ways of stopping our strategy. So like always, I'm going to break this 100 card list down into a couple of different categories. And we're going to start with the most important, which is the ramp. Ramping is incredibly important to any EDH deck. Tiny Bones activated ability is a little pricey at 6 mana, so we want to make sure we can get up there pretty quickly. Let's go over the mana rocks that we're playing. So we're playing Arcane Signet, Charcoal Diamond, Mind Stone, Soul Ring, Star Compass, and Wayfarer's Bobble. Each of these spells ramp us and get us closer to activating Tiny Bones ability. We're also playing Magus of the Coffers, which is a pretty budget alternative to Cabal Coffers, and it's a human wizard that has an activated ability that says for two and tapping it, we can add a black to our mana pool for each swamp we control. So we're in mono black, we're only going to be playing swamps, oftentimes it can give us six to seven mana. We're also playing Crypt Ghast, which is a super cool spirit. It says whenever you tap a swamp for mana, you get to add an additional black to your mana pool. So this basically doubles all of our swamps. We're also playing Bubbling Muck, which is a super cool ritual. For one black mana, we can make all swamps tap for an additional black until end of turn. So let's say our opponents are getting down to, you know, 10, 20 life, and we cast Bubbling Muck. We can probably activate Tiny Bones a bunch of times in one turn if we're doubling all of our swamp production. So with the ramp out of the way, let's get into the main meat of the deck, which is the discard. Now keep in mind later, we're gonna be going over all of the payoffs for the discard. So once we get to the payoff category, just keep all these discard spells in mind because they get a lot better than they really seem on their face value. So I've separated the discarding spells into a couple of different categories. We have the one-time discard spells, the discarding effects that rely on combat damage, repeatable, and then we've got discarding at instant speed and repeatable discards. So let's go over the one-off discarding effects. Starting off, we've got Arterial Flow, which says each opponent discards two cards, and if we control a vampire, each opponent loses two life and we gain two life. Super efficient hitting each opponent for only three mana, making them each discard two cards is where we want to be. We then have Delirium Skeins, which is a sorcery that costs two and a black, and it reads each player discards three cards. This is super efficient at three mana, hitting each player. Kind of sucks that it hits us, but we actually do have ways of taking advantage of us discard discarding cards, so it's not as big of a downside. We then have Mind Rake, which is a super cool sorcery. It says for two and a black, target player discards two cards. It then has an overloaded cost for one and a black, and when we overload it, we can change target to each. So instead of saying target player discards two cards, it says each player discards two cards. We then have Mind Sludge, which is a super good sorcery in this deck. For four and a black, target player discards a card for each swamp you control. More than likely, this is going to drain one opponent completely of cards. They will have no cards left in their hand and no way of stopping us. 
We then have Smallpox, and at this point I kind of want to say that each of these discard spells, in addition to being really good at stripping cards from our opponent's hands, are also at the same time kind of cantrips, meaning we cast them, we get the value out of them, but then because of Tiny Bones at the end step, we'll get to draw that card back. So essentially, we can replace that spell in our hand. If we just had to rely on these discard spells alone, we'd probably run out of cards just as fast as our opponents. And Smallpox is really in here as a really good cantrip, but early on it's really brutal. So it says, each player loses one life, discards a card, sacrifices a creature, then sacrifices a land. So if we can cast this on turn two or turn three, that's really going to set everybody back at the table. We then have Tap. Massacre's Cruelty, which is a 5 and a black sorcery with Delve, and it says each opponent discards two cards. So with how many cards we're going to be discarding and going through from our deck, it's super plausible that this card is only going to cost one black mana, and one black mana to strip six cards away from our opponents is super efficient. We then have Unnerve, which for three and a black says each opponent discards two cards. A little bit more expensive for three and a black, but still pretty good in the deck. And we then have Vicious Rumors, which is the watered down version of Smallpox. For one black mana, it deals one damage to each opponent. Each opponent discards a card, then puts the top card of their library into their graveyard, and we gain a life. So really, this card is basically a cantrip. It replaces itself if we have Tiny Bones out, and it triggers some of our other discard payoffs. So it's, it's, it's a decent card. Let's move on to the one-off creature discard effects, because there actually are... A plentiful amount of them. Starting off we have Bloodhusk Ritualists. It's a vampire shaman that costs two and a black and it has multi kicker so we can pay an additional black any number of times as we cast this spell. And when it enters the battlefield target opponent discards a card for each time it was kicked. Now that's a little expensive we have to pay four mana just to make one person discard something but if we've got some of our mana doublers out or if it's late game and we really need to get some extra cards out of our opponent's hand to trigger some of our discard payoffs it's probably worth it but more often than not, we might only kick it once, but that's okay because it'll just replace itself with Tiny Bones ability. We then have Burglar Rat, Rotting Rat, and Miasmic Mummy. These cards are basically all the same ability. When they enter the battlefield, each opponent discards a card, and they're just basically cantrips. They're going to replace themselves in our hand. We then have Awaken the Erstwhile, which is probably one of the best discard spells in our deck. For 3 and 2 black, we get a sorcery that says each player discards all the cards in their hand, then creates that many 2-2 two -two black zombie creature tokens. Being able to trade the cards in our opponent's hands for zombies is awesome, and being able to set up Tiny Bones activated ability perfectly is amazing, which makes Awaken the Erstwhile one of the best cards in the deck. We then have Dark Deal, which is in the deck because, like I said earlier, we have a bunch of payoffs that I'm going to go over for whenever our opponent its discard cards it's very possible that we could either kill some of our opponents or get them very close to dying with this one spell and it says each player discards all the cards in their hand and then draws that many minus one next up we have mind slicer which is a super mean card it's very similar to awaken the erstwhile and setting up our commander perfectly and when mind slicer dies each player discards all the cards in their hand Moving on to the combat damage section, all the cards in this category are pretty straightforward so I'm not going to go over each and every one of them just because they all essentially do the same thing. Whenever any of these connect, either each player or the player that is getting hit is going to discard a card. So we have Dream Stealer, which does have the additional benefit of being able to come back later for its eternalized cost. We then have Gouldraz Spectre, Liliana's Reaver, and Hypnotic Spectre. Now, let's go over to the next category, which is our repeatable slash discarding at instant speed. Because one thing that I've realized with this deck is we want to take advantage of being able to draw cards on, on each of our opponent's end steps. Because Tiny Bones says at the beginning of each end step, not just ours. So we have Cunning Lethamancer and Raider's Wake, which are only going to trigger during our turn, but they're repeatable. We then have Oppression, which is one black black for an enchantment that says whenever a player plays a spell, that player discards a card from his or her hand. This is a super brutal card and is going to let us trigger Tiny Bones' ability on each of our opponent's turns. We then have Words of Waste, which is another enchantment that costs two and a black, and for one generic mana, we can activate its ability that says the next time you would draw a card this turn, each opponent discards a card from his or her hand instead. We then have... Necrogen Mists, which at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player discards a card from his or her hand. So this is a super key card. Um, if our opponents are holding on to a key piece of interaction or something and it's the last card in their hand, Necrogen Mists is just always going to make them discard it. So they're never really going to be able to plan around things because Necrogen Mists is going to keep taking cards from their hand at the beginning of each of their turn. We then have Bottomless Pit, which is another enchantment that costs one black black. And it says during each player's upkeep, that player discards a card at random. 
I think Bottomless Pit might be one of the more brutal discard effects because they have to discard it at random, meaning they could have to discard the best card in their hand or one of the only cards that they have left of crawling back into the game. So Bottomless Pit potentially could be a super backbreaking card in the deck. All right, so let's go over all of those discard payoffs that I was referring to earlier. So we can't really rely on Tiny Bones alone to do the trick and to drain our opponents out because we might not always have access to him or he's, he might get removed a couple of times, which that might happen because people will be really afraid of losing 10 life. So let's go, let's go over those real quick. So we have Liliana's Caress, which is an enchantment that costs one and a black. And that, and it says, whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses two life. So this is super key. We could make our opponents lose anywhere between, you know, six to 10 life in one turn. We then have Magrim, which is a very, almost exactly the same text wise as Liliana's Caress, but it's an enchantment that costs two and a black. And it says, whenever an opponent discards a card, Magrim deals two damage to that player. Next up, we have Quest for the Nihil Stone. It's an enchantment which costs one black and it reads, Whenever an opponent discards a card, you may put a quest counter on quest for the Nihil Stone. And at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand and quest for the Nihil Stone has two or more quest counters on it, you may have that player lose five life. Our opponents are not going to be able to stay alive for very much longer after we get two counters on this and we drain their hands. They're going to be taking a ton of damage. Tacked on that with our commander doing them damage too, it's going to be very quick for them. We then have Shrieking Affliction, which, which is an enchantment for one black mana that says, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in hand, he or she loses three life. We then have Fell Spectre, which is a creature spectre that costs three and a black, and it has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card, and whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses two life. So if we can get two of these abilities on the table at the same time and start our discarding engines, our opponents are going to be drained of life super, super quickly. And finally, we have Davriel Rogue Shadow Mage. He is a super cool planeswalker, and I've been waiting a long time to find a home for him. He costs two and a black, and he reads, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in hand, Davriel Rogue Shadow Mage deals two damage to them. He also has a minus one loyalty ability that says target player discards a card. So he can discard cards, pull them from our opponent's hand, trigger tiny bones, and he deals damage to our opponents for having only one or fewer cards in hand. So he kind of is a multi-tool in the deck. So with the payoff and the discard out of the way, let's go over some of the glue that kind of holds the deck together. And that's the card draw and interaction and other key, and other key pieces and backup win cons. So for card draw, we have Dread Presence, which is a super cool creature for three and a black. And it says, whenever a swamp comes into play, we can choose one of the following. We draw a card and lose a life, or target opponent loses two life and we gain two life. So we can also drain our opponents out with this just by playing lands, or we can get that card draw. It's mostly in here for the card draw though. We then have Geth's Grimoire, which is a super cool artifact, and it is super powerful in this deck. And it's and it costs four mana, and it says whenever an opponent discards a card from his or her hand, we can draw a card. So if we have this out and we cast, you know, Dark Deal, Awaken the Erstwhile, or any of our other discard spells, we're going to be drawing a ton of cards. It's going to be super difficult for our opponents to keep up with our card advantage when every time they lose cards, we draw cards too. Next up, we have some quote unquote cantrips with Read the Bones, Sign in Blood, and Night's Whisper. Each of these basically get us two cards at the cost of two life. It's pretty efficient. Um, I haven't put so much card draw on this deck just because Tiny Bones is going to be drawing us cards every turn. Hope if we can get some setup right and we can't really undervalue that, that will be huge. We then have Siphon Mind, which does double duty in this deck. And it's a sorcery for three and a black that reads, each other player discards a card and we draw a card for each card discarded this way. So essentially for four mana, we're going to strip three cards away from our opponents and we're going to draw three cards. So this is a super good card in the deck. And then we also have Bone Miser, which is the way that we have of gaining benefit whenever we discard cards. So it's a creature zombie wizard that costs four and a black. And he reads, whenever you discard a creature card, make a 2-2 black zombie. Whenever you discard a land, add black black to your mana pool. And whenever you discard a non-creature non-land card, draw a card. So this has a ton of value stapled onto it, and we have tons of ways of discarding cards in our deck. Bone Miser is just going to help us recuperate some more value from discarding cards. As far as interaction goes, we're playing a fair amount, because since we're in black, we can deal with basically any type of creature. But let's go over the board wipes first. 
So we're playing one of my favorite board wipes, which is Nightmare Unmaking. It's a sorcery that costs three black black, and it has two different modes that we can choose from. The first one exiles each creature with power greater than the number of cards in your hand, and the second one exiles each creature with power less than the number of cards in your hand. So depending on what the board is at, we can choose whichever one is going to give us the most value and exile the most creatures. We're also playing Archfiend of Ifnir, which is another way that we have of taking huge benefit of us discarding cards. It's a demon that costs three and two black, and it says whenever we cycle or discard a card, we can put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature our opponent's controls. So with this out, we discard two or three cards and more than likely we're going to wipe away our opponent's creatures. We then have Mutilate, which is a sorcery that costs two black black, and it says all creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn for each swamp we control. So more often than not, this is going to take out a bunch of creatures, and I like minus one, minus one counters a little more than just destroying things because this gets around indestructible. We then have Vona's Hunger, which is a super cool sort of board wipe because it's at instant speed. And it says for two and a black, each opponent sacrifices a creature. And if we have the city's blessing, instead each opponent sacrifices half the creatures he or she controls rounded up. So if we have 10 permanents, we get the city's blessing, and then we have it for the rest of the game, and Vona's Hunger will make our opponent sacrifice half their creatures rounded up. Super powerful. And then when it comes to spot removal, we have Go for the Throat, which for one and a black at instant speed, we can destroy any non artifact creature. We then have Snuff Out, which for three and a black and at instant speed, we can destroy target non black creature and it cannot be regenerated. And if we control a swamp, we can pay four life rather than pay the mana cost for Snuff Out. So this is super cool because we can tap out, cast our spells, hold up some interaction if our opponents play a problem some creature and they won't see it coming. We then have Defile, which is a super cool card. At instant speed and four and black mana, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each swamp we control. And finally, we have Epic Downfall, which I think is a kind of underrated removal spell in Commander. For one in a black, it's a sorcery that says exile target creature with converted mana cost three or greater. So basically, from my experience, most commanders that I play against in my playgroups usually cost three or greater. So this can exile anybody's commander. It gets rid of indestructible Eldrazi's. It gets rid of the indestructible Theros gods if those are a problem for you. It gets rid of a lot of things. Um, the only thing it can't really get rid of are is tokens that get super huge. We've got other removal in the deck for that. Next up, let's go over the alternate win cons. So we have two alternate win cons in this deck if for whatever reason, if the first plan of draining our opponent's life out with Tiny Bones doesn't work. First of those is Grimoire of the Dead. It's a legendary artifact that costs four mana and it has two activated abilities. The first one says pay one and tap it and discard a card and we put a study counter on Grimoire of the Dead. Its second ability says tap and remove three study counters from Grimoire of the Dead and sacrifice it. Put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. They're black zombies in addition to their other colors and types. I think that this card is incredibly underrated. The fact that it's only under a dollar right now, I think that it should be worth way more than that. It's a little slow, but we can essentially in three turns cast a Rise of the Dark Realms, which is a nine mana card. And with how many cards we're making our opponents discard, that's going to do two things. One, it's going to fill the graveyards with a ton of super powerful creatures that we can reanimate. And two, they're not going to have enough interaction really to stop it because all of their interaction pieces are in the graveyard. There is that slight downside of us having to discard a card and it will take three turns to set up, but I think it's super worth it and can end the game if we activate it. And also we can activate it, activate it at instant speed too. We don't even have to do it on our turn. So if we can do it inconspicuously enough and not really draw too much attention to it on an opponent's end step before our turn, we can activate it, reanimate everything, and then all those creatures can attack on our turn. It's a super cool card. And then we have Grey Merchant of Asphodel, also known as Gary. He's a super cool creature that costs three and two black. And when he enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life where X is our devotion to black, and then we gain that much life. And with how many enchantments we have and how many black pips that we have among spells we control, it's not unlikely that Grey Merchant of Asphodel can do, you know, anywhere between eight to 10 damage to, to all of our opponents in one turn. Oftentimes that might be the last push that we need to drain our opponents out completely. All right, and we've only got three cards left to talk about because they didn't really fit into any other category. So we have Sangramancer. Um, super cool vampire that costs two and two black. Whenever an opponent 
Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we gain three life. And whenever an opponent discards a card, we also gain three life. This card's kind of in here to keep us alive, hanging longer into the game. If opponents start, you know, teaming up on us or there's an aggro deck at the table, this hopefully will keep us in the game. We then have Revenge of Ravens, which is a super powerful enchantment. It costs three and a black. And it reads, whenever a creature attacks us or a planeswalker we control, its controller loses one life and we gain one life. So if an opponent swings at us with five or six creatures, they're going to be taking five or six damage and we're going to be gaining that much life too. Hopefully this will just disincentivize opponents from attacking us in the first place. And then finally we have Nihil Spellbomb and this is... This card's super important in the deck because if we're ever up against a deck that really cares about a graveyard and filling their graveyard, we're kind of feeding that strategy. So this is in here to kind of stop that. It's a It costs one mana and we can tap it and sacrifice it to exile all cards from target player's graveyard. And then when the hill spell bomb is put into a graveyard from play, we can pay a black mana and draw a card. So this is super, like, it's pretty good. It can replace itself, but also it can nuke somebody's entire graveyard, which is super useful. Like I said, if an opponent's playing a graveyard deck, we can just hose their entire strategy, so. And that's it for today's deck tech. I hope you guys are super excited about Tiny Bones. I was super excited the moment it was spoiled. I started brewing this like the day of. I think it's gonna be a super interesting commander and I think your play group might groan a little whenever you bring it out because they're gonna be discarding a lot of cards and taking a lot of damage. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. If you guys like this video and you haven't subscribed yet, we super, we'd super really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our future deck techs that come out every Monday and that you don't miss our gameplay videos. We're probably going to be playing Tiny Bones in one of our upcoming gameplay videos, so you don't want to miss that. Again, thank you guys again so much, and I hope you have a wonderful week.